Hello and good morning. Today I'm going to show you how to build a Gherkin keyboard. The Gherkin is a 30% ortho linear keyboard that was developed by the 40% Club. Now, I've personally never used it as a full keyboard because I'm not that hardcore, but I like to use these boards for macro boards. The Gherkin was the first keyboard that I ever built, and I struggled really hard with finding good documentation on how to build this thing, and I hit a lot of road bumps, so I kind of wanted to just make it better. So I thought I would make this video showing the process from start to finish, all the way from building to flashing. I'll even give you a little bit of insight on how to create your own layout and then flash that firmware to the board. Don't be scared that I said flash firmware. It's really easy. We can do it. Before I give you the list of all the parts and the tools that you're going to need, just know that if you need direct links to buy any of this stuff, um, all the links will be in the description. They will be Amazon affiliate links for the ones that are on Amazon. Just a heads up. Hashtag ad. All right, for this project, you're going to need the following tools, a soldering iron, some solder, a metal sponge for cleaning the tip of your iron, a breadboard. Now, the breadboard is not required. It is highly recommended, and I'll show you why later in the video. It just makes things easier. Lastly, you're going to need some sort of helping hands. Again, this is not required, but the quality of life improvement for soldering projects, just you need to get some of these. Trust me. All right, and as far as parts, you will need a Gherkin PCB, a case of your choice, one Pro Micro microcontroller, two pairs of Pro Micro pin headers. Now, these normally come with the Pro Micro, but if you happen to have some extras laying around, those will also come in handy. 30 keyboard switches of your choosing, 30 diodes, which come with a lot of the Gherkin kits, some screws and standoffs that will be used with the case, rubber feet, a PC or a Mac for flashing the firmware of the board. Again, don't worry. This is easy. And a micro USB cable to connect to the PC. Time to show you how to build. Here I have three gherkins, two built, one not. The one that I'm showing you now is the gherkin that I use for my streaming PC. It's primarily a macro board and it's currently sporting a acrylic case from Clavier. Now, Clavier isn't really making these cases anymore, so I don't think you'll be able to find this exact one, but I can get you close. In the middle here, I have a gherkin kit from Space Cat Design. Now, unfortunately, Space Cat Design is also not uh, selling keyboard parts anymore, but I'll be able to get you as close as I can with the parts that are available. This is the Gherkin that we're going to be building today. Now, again, this case is from Clavier, which you won't be able to get your hands on, but the cases that I've found in other kits will be pretty much similar and I'll get you close enough. Most of the kits that you get nowadays are going to have this, the PCB, the plate, which the switches mount to, and then the back plate, which everything screws through to hold everything together. Just to give you an idea of how this is going to be laid out, I'm going to throw a couple switches in the corner of each plate just so I can put this together and you can see what it's supposed to look like. A little tight in there, but that's OK. It's going to be OK. Here's a side by side comparison of a built and not built. <laughs> Here are two different examples of spacers that you can get for keyboard builds. These are pretty wildly available. You can get them at keyboard building sites or even Amazon if you're frisky. And who doesn't love a good Slurpee? We got the PCB in our helping hands. And the first thing we're going to do with this board is solder the diodes to the PCB. Diodes look like this little guy. And when you have the pins bent, you'll be able to fit them into the slots on the PCB. For bending, grab the diode in the middle and then take your pointer finger and thumb and then pull it the opposite direction. It'll create pretty much a perfect bend so that you can get these into the PCB very easily. Once you bend it and push it through, you can take the legs on the other side and twist them together so that the diode doesn't come out of place. I'll just flip this over so you can see here what it looks like after I've twisted the legs together. 30 switches, so 30 diodes. So take your time getting these diodes bent and into place, and then we are going to solder all 30 of them back to back. Soldering is definitely one of the most intimidating parts of this project. So if you've never soldered before, Touch the tip of the soldering iron to both the barrel connector on the PCB and the pin of the diode. Wait for it to heat up and then touch the edge of it with your solder. The barrel is the little circular hole that's cut through the PCB and you see it has a little metal ring around it. You want to make sure that the soldering iron is touching both that barrel and the diode pin that's coming through. And then once you do that, it'll all heat up and then touching it with the solder will help it melt. You're not supposed to touch the solder to the tip of the soldering iron, but it makes it easier and I'm a soldering noob, so I don't give a shit. Now that all of the diodes are pushed through and they are soldered, flip the board over so that the gherkin text is facing you and then take a pair of your favorite snips and snip off all of the excess legs. You wanna make sure that your snips are pretty much parallel with the PCB itself. You don't wanna scratch the PCB when you're cutting these off. 
Next up is getting your Pro Micro headers in place. And we know when you buy a Pro Micro, it comes with a pair of these headers. You'll see that pins on one side of it are longer and one side are shorter. So we're gonna be putting the short end of the Pro Micro headers into the PCB and soldering it. We need to do a little bit of prep work before we do that though. So remember when I was talking about a breadboard, this is where it comes in handy. Putting the pins inside the breadboard and then putting the PCB on top of the pins, it makes sure that the header pins stay perpendicular to the PCB. So having a breadboard makes this really easy. Take the longer end of the headers and push them into the breadboard. You're gonna to wanna to do this with both sides. Once they're in the breadboard, take your PCB and see if the pins actually line up with where they're supposed to go on the PCB. Don't be sad if you have to adjust it a little bit. With the pins in the breadboard and the PCB on it with the pins coming through the PCB, I'm gonna solder all of the corners of these headers. Soldering the corners makes it so that when I'm soldering all of the rest of the pins, the board doesn't become uneven. Once you have your four corners soldered down, go ahead and move your way down, solder the left side first, and then move on to the right side. Now, before I get into soldering any of the switches or the PCB, I wanna take this case apart and make sure I'm doing this right. If you ever just wanted to shove it in there. <laughs> so take the part of the case where your switches are supposed to mount to and put a switch in every single corner. The switches can only go inside the PCB one way. So if you're trying to fit it and it's not quite working, flip the PCB around and try again. Once you verify that the PCB is facing the right way, go ahead and put in all the rest of your switches. The Pro Micro, where that's supposed to go, needs to be facing the part of the case where you have an opening so that the USB cable has room to connect. After putting in all the switches, I always press down firmly on all areas just to make sure that it's snug. Once all of your switches are in, again, you can take your Gherkin PCB, make sure that the text is facing you, the Gherkin white text, and throw it on there and make sure that all of the switch pins are coming through. Remember, there are two pins per switch that should all be coming up through the PCB. Once I verify that every single switch has both of its pins coming up through the PCB, I want to solder each one of the corner switches, again, just to make sure that everything is in its place. And I'll usually do a once over of all the switches to make sure that they are all straight and none of them are gonna be crooked. Now it is time to solder all of the switches to the PCB. See the two switches that are near the Pro Micro? After you solder, snip those switch pins short so that it doesn't come in contact with the Pro Micro. That is very, very important. Please don't skip that step. Next, take some non-conductive tape. You wanna be taping off where the Pro Micro is gonna be connecting to because you don't want any of the switch pins to make contact with the Pro Micro. Remember when I said you were gonna need an extra pair of these header pins? I actually use these as spacers. This is so that the Pro Micro is not too close to the PCB because you want your USB cable to have room to plug in. So this is what it looks like. Once you have found a way to basically space or lift your Pro Micro away from the PCB a little bit, just solder those middle pins. Once you have two of the middle pins soldered, go ahead and pull out whatever you use to space it and then solder each one of the corners. Now that each one of your corners is soldered, go ahead and move down the top row of pins first, making sure that every single solder point is nice and clean and then move your way down the second row as well. Yo, I'm so sorry, I forgot to tell you about something. There's one trick to this board, and one kind of like con of the Gherkin. There isn't an onboard reset switch. So if you wanna be able to reset and flash firmware, it can gotta be cumbersome because then you gotta find a way to bridge the ground and the reset pins together uh, with the case still on. It's not fun. What I've done in the past is take two little wires and then solder them to a super small switch so that when you, uh, you're you hitting the switch, you're bridging the gap and then it resets. It's a lot of extra work and I don't really have a great looking solution for it. Um, so I regret to inform you that you might just have to get crafty and I'm sorry. Okay, that's all, goodbye. All right, it is time to create a new layout. Go ahead and head on over to QMK Configurator. This is an online utility that you can use to build your layouts for your keyboards. Search for the 40% Gherkin keyboard. Click on every single one of the empty spaces where keys would go and just put in a random letter or number. We're basically just building a test layout. Once you have a random letter or number assigned to every single key, go ahead and give your layout a name and then hit compile. This is gonna go through a bunch of steps. It'll take one to two minutes of compiling the firmware and then it'll let you download it. Now that the firmware has compiled, go ahead and download that firmware 
and you'll see it pop up in the bottom left-hand corner if you're using a Chrome browser, you're gonna need to download an app. So the website that we're using to build the layouts is QMK Configurator, but the app that you need to flash your layout firmware to the keyboard is called QMK Toolbox. So I'll show you on the screen right here where to get it. Just download it and make sure that it's running um, when you are ready to flash your firmware. In QMK Toolbox, hit open and navigate to where you downloaded that firmware. It should most likely be in your downloads folder. Okay, very important step here. In order to flash a firmware that has your keyboard layout to the keyboard, you have to reset the board because when the board resets and as it's booting up, you have to use this very small window of time to flash the firmware to the board. It's, it's usually anywhere from five to 15 seconds. The Gherkin does not have a reset button on the keyboard, but what you can do is simulate a reset by touching the ground and the reset pins together with something metal. Now, with the Pro Micro facing the opposite way, you can't see which ones are the ground and the reset, but if you have your board the same way I do, you touch those two pins together and it'll reset. So now that I got that explanation out of the way, I'm going to touch these two pins together. And you might ask, how do you know when it resets? Well, if you have QMK Configurator open, when you touch these two pins together, you will actually see a prompt show up in QMK Configure. So here we go, I'm gonna to touch these here and bloop, there you go. That is a good sign that the board is properly resetting. Now, once you see that yellow text, you want to hit that flash button. Remember, you have a small window of time. So hit the reset pins, wait for the yellow text, and then hit flash. And once it completes, you'll see right at the bottom here that the flashing is completed. The reason I have this notepad file up here and why we flashed a test firmware is because if you click on the notepad file and then you start mashing keys on the keyboard, you should see those keys start to pop up in notepad. So I start in the top left of the keyboard and I start moving my way down, hitting all of the random keys and you will start to see the keyboard working. Obviously, you don't want a bunch of random numbers and letters for your keyboard layout. So once you verify that all of your keys are working, go back to QMK Configurator, build the layout that you want, compile it, download the firmware, and then go through the same process. Open up QMK, open up your firmware, reset the board, and then flash your firmware to the board. Once that's done, you're pretty much done. The only thing left for you to do is to put all of your keycaps on your board and admire your good work. And if that didn't work, I'm afraid you have an insane amount of troubleshooting <laughs> ahead of you because this can be a little finicky, but if you follow these steps, I'm almost gonna guarantee that you've got a working board in front of you. Or if you're lucky, three boards. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you happen to have any questions about the build that was done here, um, we have a lot of people in Discord that love talking to people about keyboards and that are knowledgeable with builds. So if you run into any roadblocks or you just need some general help, Feel free to jump in the Discord and ask some questions. We'd love to have you. We're coming up on Christmas, so I hope that you have a wonderful holiday. Hopefully the next time I do one of these keyboard videos, I'll be building my own full keyboard, like a 65% tofu or something for my gaming PC or a split. I've been thinking about Nergo Docs lately. All right, I gotta go, I love you. It's, it, it's a penis hat. You know what? Usually my girlfriend is the first person to tell me those kinds of things, but look, my penis, if I put on a shirt, I could be an entire dick. See these pants? I could be a walking penis.